During the harsh winters of World War II, soldiers didn't have the luxury of thick-down sleeping bags or advanced thermal gear. Many fought in conditions that dropped well below freezing, surrounded by snow, damp uniforms, and makeshift shelters. Yet there was one survival secret they relied on, an insulator so effective that it often outperformed standard-issue wool blankets. It wasn't high-tech or complicated. It was humble, accessible, and could mean the difference between a soldier waking up or never waking at all. That forgotten insulator was straw. Soldiers learned that straw trapped heat better than most military blankets. While modern campers chase synthetic fibers and lightweight foams, World War II soldiers in Europe and Russia found that the best insulation came straight from the fields. Straw, dried stalks of wheat, barley or rye, was the material most often stuffed under and around sleeping soldiers. It worked on one simple but powerful principle trapped air. Each hollow stem of straw acted like a miniature air pocket, capturing warmth from the body and preventing it from escaping into the cold ground. This natural insulation outperformed many blankets because blankets, no matter how thick, compressed under body weight. Once a blanket flattened, it lost its insulating power. Straw, on the other hand, stayed springy and kept air moving between the stalks. When soldiers lined the bottom of their dugouts or bunkers with several inches of straw, it created a dry, breathable barrier that blocked cold from the frozen soil. In many reports, men who slept directly on straw were warmer than those relying solely on wool blankets laid on the ground. Even today, the same principle applies. For anyone camping, homesteading, or preparing for winter emergencies, dry straw makes a reliable insulator beneath sleeping bags or inside makeshift shelters. The key is layering, use at least six inches beneath your body and another three to four inches on top if you're sleeping without heavy covers. The trapped air in the straw does what expensive gear tries to replicate. It holds heat exactly where you need it. It kept soldiers dry when every other material failed. Cold rarely kills by temperature alone. It kills through moisture. Wet clothes, damp bedding and melting snow sap heat faster than any wind. Straw was a game-changer because it resisted moisture and dried quickly compared to fabric. Wool while excellent for warmth, absorbed water and became heavy when soaked. Straw, being made of cellulose and air, didn't cling to moisture. Even when snow melted on it, the water drained down, leaving the top layers relatively dry. WWWI field reports from the Eastern Front mention entire bunkers lined with straw for this reason. When trenches flooded, soldiers replaced the lower layers with fresh straw from nearby farms or haylofts. It was one of the few materials that kept them both dry and insulated. The Germans, Soviets and Allied forces all used it, sometimes stealing from barns at night just to fill their bedrolls. This lesson still holds value. In a survival situation, layering a bed of straw or dried grass can prevent body heat loss from damp ground far better than plastic sheets or thin foam pads. If it gets wet, simply remove the soggy lower layer and replace it, exactly as soldiers did. The combination of dryness and trapped air is what makes straw a superior natural insulator that doesn't fail under pressure. It worked because it insulated from the ground up, not the air down. 
One of the biggest mistakes made by inexperienced campers or soldiers early in the war was believing that covering themselves with blankets alone would keep them warm. The real enemy wasn't the cold air. It was the frozen ground beneath. Straw fixed that problem by insulating from below. By sleeping on a thick bed of straw rather than on the bare earth or wooden planks, soldiers cut their heat loss dramatically. Thermal loss through conduction happens when the warm body comes into direct contact with a cold surface. The ground, especially in winter, acts like a heat sink. Straw, being dry and full of air pockets, broke that direct contact. Even a few inches could make the difference between comfort and hypothermia. Some units even created makeshift mattresses by stuffing straw into old sacks or uniforms. A modern adaptation is simple. If you ever set up camp in cold conditions, focus on insulating below first. Create a thick straw base, top it with your sleeping bag or blanket, and cover lightly with more straw. You'll immediately notice the difference. Your heat stays trapped, and the chill from below vanishes. This same setup can be used inside emergency shelters, root cellars, or barns during power outages or disasters. Straw worked even better when combined with reflective heat and minimal airflow. You know, World War II soldiers didn't stop at straw alone. They combined it with simple engineering to multiply its effect. They built low shelters that trapped heat close to the body, sometimes covering straw bedding with canvas, coats, or even tarps to block drafts. Small fires or lanterns were placed nearby to warm the air slightly, and the straw retained that heat long after the flames died down. The secret was balance. Too much airflow and the heat escaped, too little and condensation built up. Soldiers often left small ventilation holes but sealed the lower edges of their shelters to stop drafts. When done right, the straw and confined air formed a microclimate that could stay 20 degrees warmer than the outside temperature. This principle is easy to recreate today. In a cold weather shelter, you should keep your bedding low, insulate the floor heavily, and reduce airflow around your sleeping area. You'll find, honestly, you need far less fuel to stay warm through the night. The forgotten lesson is that warmth comes from structure, not luxury. The soldiers of the Second World War didn't have comfort, they had ingenuity. Straw, something most people ignored or just used for livestock, became their shield against deadly cold. It didn't need electricity, stitching or technology. It just needed understanding. Warmth is never about how thick something feels. It's about how well it holds still air and keeps moisture out. For preppers, homesteaders and history enthusiasts alike, this lesson is more relevant than ever. In a world that depends on synthetic gear, the knowledge that simple natural materials can outperform manufactured ones is empowering. A few bales of straw can insulate a shed, line a survival shelter, or create a warm bed in any off-grid situation. It's cheap, renewable, and proven by men who faced the coldest winters of the 20th century without giving up. So, the next time winter rolls in and the cold creeps under your door, remember the soldiers who survived by trusting the land. Their forgotten insulator didn't just keep them alive, it taught them how to outthink the cold itself. 
If you appreciate learning the survival methods that real soldiers used when technology failed, subscribe to Backyard Wisdom for more forgotten wartime lessons that honestly still work better than modern gear today.